Okay, welcome back. I'm just working on some additional tones for this scene. Um, I was looking at this scene, and right now everything is approximately the same value. I mean, we have some lighter values in here. I guess not really lighter, uh, the same values, but we have the same intensity running through here. And what I was thinking is that it needs some, you know, a little bit of extra life in here. And while well, this is a moonlit scene, um, and I wouldn't get all these different colors, you know, in real life, um, you know, for the sake of the scene, uh, I'm just going to do it anyway. And what I'm getting at is that I'm going to start utilizing um, some uh, more intense uh, greens down in this uh, grassy area. It just, it needs something. It needs a, kind of a, a jolt of life uh, injected into the, uh, you know, the uh, terrain. You know, some warmer, richer tones, I think. Um, I mean, this green here that I'm applying will be, you know, a little bit buried, you know, underneath some additional tones that I put over it, but in the end result, hopefully it'll be nice and rich and deep and saturated in there uh, with some nice uh, uh, variation of intensity. Okay, running some in here. I still want this area to be to remain light, though. So I'm going to try to keep that um, fairly light in there. Uh, just a little bit uh, brighter. Alright, this color right here that I'm using is called Jungle Green. Kind of a warm green. Okay, moving on. Moving into the kind of the darker greens right here. This is a number 72 Pine Green. Start working the shadows a little bit more, giving some weight to the scene. Okay, running over some of that jungle green, layering it on there. Let's add a little bit of variation in here, too. Let's take a kind of a ripped paper towel. And there's some little textures in here from the uh, sedge filler. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask some of them off. In fact, I, I can use this towel getting a little bit more jagged for, for variation. And just lay it down wherever you want it to go. Okay, and just start toning it in. Just a real simple masking approach. Okay, again, this is using the pine green. Let's grab some this brown here. Often looks really good in grass. Something like that. And maybe over here by these trees too. Let's go back to some pine green. Okay. A little bit of brown back there. Something like that. And have a, uh, yet another layer somewhere back in here to give a varied surface. Green. Kind of switching back between uh, the green and the brown right now. Okay. Looks pretty good. And how about even here within the foreground?
Okay, that's starting to come together a little bit more now. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to use much more masking on here. Uh, I don't know, maybe that technique will look good in the sky as well, I don't know. Okay, and the same thing applies to the sky here. Let's go with some, uh, I don't know, a more vibrant, exciting sky in all its darkness. This is an Adirondack denim. Um, always one of my favorite blues out there. It's, it's, it's fairly dark, and I, I guess it's, you know, the color is just like its uh, name. It's supposed to look like denim. A real brand new denim, not a faded denim. This pad is getting fairly dry, which isn't a bad thing. Sometimes you get a little bit more control over it that way. It's fairly dry. You don't have to worry about, you know, putting on some of the real thick, you know, a precarious application of a very wet, very dark tone, you know, instantly. I mean, of course, with this brush, you always have control over it, but, you know, if the ink is inherently lighter to begin with, then you don't even have to worry about it right off the bat. Incorporating it, incorporating it in with the, uh, the, the terrain down below, to give the uh, sky and land some continuity. After all, blues relate to greens, because, you know, greens are blues with the uh, warm element of yellow in it. Okay. Deepening some of the shadows. Okay, here's the Memento Danube Blue. Danube. And test it out. A little tone on that horizon down there. Let's see. Let's go with the... Uh, let's even go with the mask, I think. I want that horizon on the, uh, the landscape to stand out a little bit more, so... If you want something to stand out... Um, you know, there's different, uh, you know, techniques you can use, but one of the things you, you can always just kind of make the area behind it darker. Um, let's try... Um, let's see here. This is a bottle green. Bring that down the, uh, the grass. Kind of looking for a jagged area. Bottle green is uh, again one of the uh, kind of the darker greens within the uh, the Marvy um, line of colors. I don't know if it's the darkest green, but it's it's got to be right up there. Uh, I think it's certainly the darkest of the pad uh, greens out of the uh, 40 or so colors they have in uh, Marvy matchable form. And that's given a lot more texture and variation in little given areas. All 
right. What's going on with the dark brown? Just as we used uh, some blue down in the uh, grass, why don't we take some of this brown up in the sky? And again, it's not reading as brown, it's overlapping blue. goes into the, gets into the, some of that white area it kind of looks more as like more like kind of a nice rich gray tone it's kind of mellowing out the sky a little bit actually Super, super dark blue. As dark as you go with other blues, you almost always go darker with Prussian blue. Oh yeah, that's really starting to close off the edges for me and contain the, uh, the composition nicely. some of the tree branch. Anchoring the bottom scene. Okay. Take that down. I always switch off the paper so you can see how dark it's getting here against a white background. Okay. I'm going to finish off with some additional elements down here and additional tones and uh, put in some finishing touches with pens and uh, pigment and glossy paper in step three. Okay? Thanks for watching.